Hey everybody, so it's fall here in Tennessee. Uh, it's mid-November. I just finished uh, a small harvest of some Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes. Uh, didn't have a huge harvest this year. This is just uh, a couple plants that I planted in my back forest garden area. And I uh, planted them in some pretty thick vegetation to see if they would still grow. Um, and they did. They did okay. Um, you know, usually they produce a lot more than this does. So maybe next year I'll, I'll, I'll throw them in a uh, raised bed to get a lot more uh, production out of them. Let's uh, take a look around and see what else I have going on here. Okay, so this is my backyard garden. Uh, the cardoon plant is doing really well. I have two of these, one's here and one's in my front yard. Uh, the cardoon is related to the artichoke, um, and you actually harvest the stalks. It doesn't you don't actually harvest the, the flower head like you do with artichoke? Um, they're they're okay. They take a lot of um, preparation. You've got to you know, pull them off. You got to um, pull off the leaves. You've got to peel the, the stalks, and then you've got to blanch them so they don't turn brown. Um, and I didn't actually have any recipes that I, I used them in. I kind of just like cooked them up and, and tried them and they're all right. Uh, I don't know if I'd grow them again, but you know, they, they do a good job kind of growing in the cold and, and keeping the soil alive. Um, so I'm going to keep them in the ground and uh, see if, if they come back next year. They should because they're perennials. Um, you can also see I've got, I threw down some cover crops here. Uh, what you can see poking up, the feathery leaves are uh, um, legumes, they're um, lentils actually. And uh, the lentils are just sprouted from my kitchen and I just threw them in here and, and they're kind of covering the ground and they will die probably in the frost, the first frost. So it's kind of just a temporary cover crop. And I also got, I threw down some winter wheat, just kind of a thin um, throw down of some, uh, some, some cover crops some winter wheat. Uh, this will most likely survive the winter and then I'll have to do something with it in the spring. Uh, kind of a mistake on my part because I was hoping that it would die over the winter so I wouldn't have to deal with it in the spring, but I'll, I'll either have to pull it up or, you know, chop it down. Uh, and I actually have that growing in quite a few spots. Um, but it, it's really good at keeping the soil alive and keeping the, the soil microbes happy in the in the winter and have something to, uh, to live off of. Um, we've got strawberries also working as a ground cover. Um, you can't see any here, um, but they're actually still blooming. Um, there's, there's one right there still blooming in mid-November here and I'm getting strawberries. Um, they're not huge and sometimes the bugs get to them but uh, I still get to eat strawberries which is fun for me. Um, let's see what else we have here. Ah, we've got our Egyptian walking onions um, and I planted these, I just transplanted them actually in the middle of the season because I, uh, I planted them back with the Jerusalem artichokes in the back forest garden there and, and realized that you know they were struggling so they seem to be happier here. Um, so they actually, if you've never uh, experienced these before, these are perennial onions in that they will, uh, instead of having to pull up the uh, onions on the bottom, they'll actually grow, and instead of flowering, they'll actually grow into these bulbs on top and they'll fall over and walk across your garden basically season after season, that's why they call them that. So I got three plants here and uh, I really like them. You can harvest the green onions too on top um, and, and use them in your recipes, so they're uh, really nice. Let's see what else I have. Here's a Concord grape I planted. I actually bought it at Walmart. Uh, not a big fan of buying plants at Walmart, but it was, uh, I think, 4 or $5. And it's Concord grape, which is my favorite grape variety right now. Um, so I planted that and it grew uh, pretty well this year. It didn't actually flower though, which I'm okay with because I probably wasn't gonna let it go to fruit anyway the first season. But uh, it still hasn't gone completely dormant yet, but uh, should, should be fine for the winter and come back next year. Here's my front yard garden. Uh, I got pineapple sage that did really, really well this year. Uh, it is an annual uh, here in Tennessee. I don't, I don't believe it will uh, survive the winter. Um, it, it blossomed in uh, October and I got these nice red flowers. You can tell there's some frost damage on it. Um, it is frost tender. Uh, but the flowers smell really nice and, they're, and they attract uh, butterflies. I think the bees try to come in and, and pollinate them a bit. But uh, you know, I, I, it didn't seem like the bees knew how to do it. <laughs> they were like kind of bumbling around the the base but not actually getting into the flowers so i think they were kind of confused by it but it's better for hummingbirds and and moths things with like the long long tongues um oh there's a bumblebee down there i don't know if you can see them uh, but they're the bumblebees well, actually was, i'm sorry it's a honeybee uh are pollinating oh there's one in there as well um but they're pollinating the strawberries down here and uh let's see if we can find a strawberry this one out there, this variety is called Mera de Bois, and uh, it's uh, still flowering and fruiting in the middle of November, and I'm still getting strawberries, so it's a really nice variety. It's, it goes all year long. Got them off of Amazon. Uh, they weren't, weren't very expensive either. Got my mints going on here. Uh, in the back, I've got some comfrey growing, kind of feeding the soil. 
Um, got like a little mini watercress plant down here uh, that I planted. It's actually doing all right. This is a kind of like a small swale that comes, the gutters kind of feed this, this on contour swale line right here. And the watercress is sitting right in it. So it probably has a decent amount of uh, water throughout the year. Uh, what else we have? Oh, this is a uh, aronia plant, also called um, chokeberry, I believe is the other name. Uh, didn't actually fruit this year, which I was a little disappointed in, but uh, it looked like it grew quite a bit uh, since I got it. And so I think probably next year I'll get a nice, uh, nice little handful of berries from which I'm excited about. My fig, which I bought uh, also this year, um, didn't look like it was fruiting for a while, but then a couple months back I noticed some figs were starting to form. Uh, I don't really know if I'll get to eat that fig over there before, before the plant goes dormant, but um, um, if I can, that'd be great, and I'll definitely get some next year. Last but not least, I got some nettles growing here. Uh, I bought these on eBay uh, about a year and a half ago, and I transplanted them in pots uh, last winter and in the ground uh, in the spring. And so I've got a couple locations where they're at in my uh, forest garden area here. And they're actually really, really good greens. They're probably one of my favorites uh, because they don't really have a lot of bitter taste or um, alkaloids that uh, make it uh, like a bitter taste. Uh, the thorns and the, the needles on it, which are pretty small, um, are the plant's protection as opposed to its um, bitter taste. So uh, the, the taste is really good. You just got to remember to either cook it or roll it up and, and kind of chew it with a with the spiny sides facing in so you don't get poked in the tongue. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, let me know if you have any questions about my fall garden. Thanks. Bye.